Noble Review, Macroeconomics and Microeconomics, for use with introductory college macro and micro courses, as well as the AP macro and micro exams. In this podcast, we'll go over the top 10 concepts that you need to know unit by unit. Noble 6, the international sector, macro. Number 1. What is the difference between a current account transaction and a capital account transaction? The balance of payment system keeps record of all foreign transactions. There are two main accounts in the balance of payment system, the current account and financial or capital account. The current account consists of imports, exports, and foreign transfer payments. The financial account or capital account consists of real assets and financial assets. A real asset is property or a factory. A financial asset is a stock or a bond. When foreign money flows into our current account as a result of an export, our current account is credited. When our currency leaves the capital account after purchasing a foreign apartment complex, the capital account is debited. If one account shows a surplus, the other will show a deficit. In the end, the two accounts should balance. Number two, how does a trade deficit affect a nation's economy in the short run? A trade deficit occurs when a nation's imports are greater than its exports. Net exports are negative and the current account is showing a deficit. When a trade deficit increases in the short run, Aggregate demand shifts to the left, the price level decreases, real GDP falls, and unemployment rises. If a nation's exports are greater than its imports, it has a trade surplus, or current account surplus. When net exports increase, aggregate demands will increase. In the long run, exports and imports will balance out. Number 3. How do you determine whether a country will benefit from trade? To determine whether two countries should specialize in trade, use the law of comparative advantage, also known as the Ricardian model. In Noble 1, we said that you simply look at the opportunity cost of production. The country with the lowest relative opportunity cost will specialize in the production of that good and export that good if trade occurs. To determine if trade terms are beneficial, simply divide the imports by the exports for each country. If the imports divided by the exports are greater than the opportunity cost of the good that the country is exporting, then it is a good trade for the country. If that works out for both countries, then the trade will occur as both will benefit. Number four, what are some barriers to international trade? In the long run, the gains from international trade are greater than the losses. In the short run, trade can hurt domestic producers and cause domestic unemployment, which can lead to the implementation of trade barriers by policymakers. One type of trade barrier is a tariff, a protectionist tool that taxes imports. This raises the cost of foreign goods to keep domestic industries alive. However, Higher prices hurt consumers. The market graph here shows the effects of a per unit tariff. DP represents the domestic price, WP represents the world price, and WP plus T represents the world price with a tariff. The lightly shaded rectangle is the total tariff revenue collected by the government, and the two shaded triangles represent the deadweight loss or inefficiency created by the tariff. We will revisit this graph in Noble 11. Other tools of protectionist policy include import quotas, which are legal limits, complicated licensing procedures, and high quality standards. A more unfortunate barrier to trade is a global military conflict that cuts off supply lines between trade partners, or perhaps a war between two trading partners. Number five, what factors will cause a currency to appreciate in value? The international value of currency will appreciate or increase in value relative to another currency due to the following factors. One, interest rates increase. 
foreigners will demand more bonds when interest rates rise because foreigners will receive greater returns on interest-bearing assets. There will be more demand for currency, so the currency will appreciate. 2. Taste and preferences for goods increase. If foreigners demand products produced over here, then there will be more demand for currency and the currency will appreciate. 3. Inflation decreases. If prices are relatively lower here than overseas, then foreigners will demand goods over here. There will be more demand for currency, so the currency will appreciate. 4. Income decreases. If this economy becomes weaker than a foreign economy, this economy cannot afford to buy as many foreign goods. This economy will supply fewer units of currency to the foreign exchange market, so the currency will appreciate. 5. Foreign direct investment inflows. If foreigners want to build factories over here, then they must first acquire our currency to do so. This increased demand for our currency will lead to its appreciation. Number 6. What factors will cause currency to depreciate in value? The international value of currency will depreciate or decrease in value relative to another currency due to the following factors. 1. Interest rates decrease. Foreigners will demand fewer bonds when interest rates fall because foreigners will receive less return on interest-bearing assets. 2. Taste and preferences for goods decrease. If foreigners demand fewer products produced over here, then the currency will depreciate. 3. Inflation increases. If prices are relatively higher over here than overseas, then foreigners will not want our goods and we will want to import cheaper goods from overseas. 4. Incomes increase. If this economy becomes stronger than a foreign economy, the foreign economy cannot afford as many of our goods. However, we can afford to purchase more foreign goods. 5. Foreign direct investment outflows. If we want to build more factories overseas than foreigners want to build here, our currency will depreciate. We would increase the supply of our currency as we demand more foreign currency. Number 7. How do exchange rates work? An exchange rate is determined by supply and demand in the foreign exchange market. It is how much of one country's currency it takes to buy one unit of another country's currency. For example, it might cost 0.73 euro to buy one US dollar this month. If it costs 0.5 euro to buy one US dollar next month, the euro has appreciated in value because it takes fewer euros to buy one US dollar. This means that the dollar has depreciated against the euro. With the exchange rates from the example above, $1.37 US will buy one euro this month. Next month, it costs two US dollars to buy one euro. Again, the euro appreciated and the US dollar depreciated. Exchange rates and the value of a currency are all relative. Number 8. How do you illustrate the foreign exchange market? To graph a foreign exchange market, you need two different currencies to compare. For example, the market for US dollars needs to show how much of a foreign currency is needed to buy one US dollar. In the market for US dollars, the quantity of US dollars goes on the X axis. On the Y axis, you put the foreign currency price of the US dollar. This graph shows the market for US dollars and the euro price of a dollar. If the euro price of a US dollar increases, it takes more euros to buy one US dollar. This means that the US dollar appreciated and the euro depreciated. The next graph shows the market for euros and the US dollar price of a euro. If the US dollar price of a euro increases, it takes more dollars to buy a euro. This means that the euro appreciated and the US dollar depreciated. Number 9. How do you show the effects of increased interest rates using the foreign exchange market? Interest rates are an important determinant of a country's currency value. If a central bank pursues a tight monetary policy that causes interest rates to rise, 
or an expansionary fiscal policy that causes interest rates to rise, then there would be more demand by foreigners for the country's interest-bearing assets, like bonds. This will lead to an increase in demand for the currency and appreciate its value. When a country's currency appreciates, its goods look more expensive to foreigners, while foreign goods look cheap. This will reduce the country's net exports and shift aggregate demand to the left. Remember, high interest rates also harm long-run economic growth as it slows down the growth of capital stock. Number 10. How do you show the effects of a decrease in aggregate income using the foreign exchange market? Suppose one economy is in recession while another country's economy is strong. The country in recession won't be able to import as many goods since income is low. Therefore, it will supply less currency to the foreign exchange market. When this happens, the value of currency will appreciate. This diagram assumes that the U.S. is in recession and the German economy is doing well. Bonus! Why are interest rates important? As you know, interest rates play several vital roles within an economy. However, it can be difficult for students to grasp them all. Here is a chart that summarizes the main effects of interest rate changes. Interest rates increase. When interest rates increase, consumption and investment spending decreases, which means aggregate demand decreases. When interest rates increase, Bond prices will decrease. When interest rates increase, the growth of capital stock slows, which means the long-run economic growth rate of the economy will slow. When interest rates increase, the international demand for bonds and currency increase. That would appreciate the currency and cause net exports to decrease. When interest rates decrease, consumption and investment spending increase, which increases aggregate demand. When interest rates decrease, bond prices increase. When interest rates decrease, the growth of capital stock increases, which means the long-run economic growth rate of the economy will also increase. When interest rates decrease, the international demand for bonds and currency decrease. This will depreciate the currency and cause an increase in net exports. That wraps up this episode of Noble Review's Top 10 Economic Concepts. Now for extra study resources, please visit my website at mrmedico.info. Thanks for choosing to learn with the Noble Review. Till next time.